In this video we will cover how to retransform NMR data and how to phase 1D spectra. In a typical workflow, these should be the first steps in processing your results. The output of ICON NMR goes through an automated processing that includes correcting the phase of the results. It is usually pretty good and for most results will not have to be further optimized. However, there are datasets that the software will have problems with, and you should be familiar with the steps to phase data correctly. Poor phasing will lead to inaccurate integration and chemical shifts, so, do not think bad phasing is just a cosmetic problem. Before you make any changes to your data you should reprocess the spectrum with the EFP command. This removes the baseline correction that the automation performs to give better integrals. This might distort the baseline and make phasing more difficult. The EFP command actually performs three tasks and each letter in the command represents the steps involved. The F stands for Fourier transform. This has to be performed to take the raw time-based NMR data and convert it to the frequency-based spectrum that can be read. We will see this clearer in a moment. The E is for exponential multiplication, also known as line broadening. This is a noise filtering step that will improve the appearance of the spectrum. The consequence of this step is a loss in resolution, thus the line broadening name. NMR data is collected after a pulse or series of pulses, over a time axis. This time span is called the acquisition time and in parameters you will see it reported as AQ. The result is what we call a free induction decay or a FID for short. A FID will start off being intense and will die away during the collection time. Since noise is constant over the acquisition time, the signal-to-noise ratio, often considered the sensitivity, is better in the front of the FID than at the end. However, the longer we collect the NMR signals the better the exact frequencies are determined, so the line width information is at the tail of the FID. The amount of line broadening is set by the LB parameter. The default value is usually pretty conservative, in favor of preserving resolution. If you increase the LB to say 3 Hz, the FID will be modified before the Fourier transfer like this. Note the squashing of the end of the FID but the front is mostly untouched. If we process the data with EFP, note how the peaks are much broader than before and the noise has been mostly removed. Line broadening is a non-destructive and reversible step so feel free to experiment. To reprocess data without any line broadening, you could use the FP command, which does not perform the exponential multiplication before the Fourier transform. A good starting value for LB is the reciprocal of the acquisition time, which for proton is about 3 to 4 seconds and for carbon is about 1 second. So, if I set LB to 0.3 and reprocess with EFP, I usually get decent line widths and manageable noise with samples that are not too dilute. For dilute samples that give noisy spectra, try increasing LB in steps to determine the best compromise of sensitivity and resolution. The P in EFP is a phase correction. This just applies the last phase correction, so if it was okay before, it should still give you a correctly phase spectrum. However, if the phasing was not correct the result will still be misphased. To show the spectrum without the phase correction, in this case what the automation performed, you could use the EF command. The automation uses a command called APK, Automatic Phase Correction, with a K. Bruker is a German company and some of the commands have an origin in their language. As you can see APK does a decent job correcting phase, but it is not perfect and often fails when you have a broad peak in your spectrum. To make manual adjustments to the phase you would first find the phase tab on the tab row above the spectrum. Clicking on the phase tab will open the routine. Notice that the tab row is replaced by a series of buttons that are specific for the phasing operation. A complete description of the buttons is in our topspin manual and we will work with a few in this video. The integration and peak labels have been removed from the spectrum to help with the phasing. Note the red cursor that now appears in the spectrum window. This is the phasing pivot point and topspin places it on the tallest peak in the spectrum. If there is a reason to change the pivot point you can right click at the desired location and choose set pivot point. This is usually not necessary since correct phasing can be accomplished with the pivot point on any peak. You just need to know where it is before you make any adjustments. 
phasing is made easier if you blow up the vertical expansion and raise the spectrum into the top position with the upward pointing arrow on the main button bar. Manual phasing is usually just a two-step process. Each step is defined by the two buttons labeled 0 and 1. They represent 0th order and 1st order phase correction and will be made clearer in the following demonstration. Move the mouse to the 0 button. Click and hold the left mouse button, and make adjustments by moving the mouse up or down. This controls the zeroth order correction which makes changes across the whole spectrum. This is considered the frequency independent phase correction. The sensitivity of the adjustment can be changed with the two triangle icons, which will either ramp up, or ramp down the sensitivity. By clicking and holding the one button, you can make first order phase corrections by moving the mouse up or down. This adjustment makes changes that are greater further away from the pivot point. In other words, it is a frequency-dependent correction. To correct the spectrum, you would first adjust the zeroth order phase. Focus your attention on the peak under the pivot point. Adjust the phase until the baseline going into and out of the peak is flat and even. This might be difficult for crowded regions and changing the pivot point to a less crowded region might be helpful. Next, make adjustment to the first order phase. Here you should focus your attention on a peak far away from the pivot point. Remember that adjusting the sensitivity will help you find the correct phase. When you are done with the first order correction you should look back at the pivot point to see if further zeroth order correction is necessary. If needed, repeat the process of zeroth and first order adjustments. All peaks across the spectrum should now be correct. When you are done you save and exit the phase tab with the button that has an old style floppy disk and return arrow. If you want to abandon any changes you made and revert to the previous spectrum you can hit the button with just return arrow icon. This concludes our video on spectrum transformation and phasing. As always if you have any questions the staff would be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.